November 4, 2019 Thomas Merton Finding Our True Selves My name is Thomas Merton. I was born in France in 1915 during the First World War. My mother was American and my father was from New Zealand. They were both artists and we were rather poor. My brother John Paul was born when I was three years old. Thomas's mother became very ill and died when he was just six years old and John Paul was three. Thomas stayed with their father and baby John Paul was sent to America to live with their grandparents. My schooling was erratic because my father frequently withdrew me from school to travel with him. I was pretty wild and when my father couldn't handle me, he would send me to my grandparents. After a while, father would have me return to France and then put me in boarding school. The year Thomas entered a British preparatory school, his father was diagnosed with a malignant brain tumor and died when Thomas was 16 years old. He felt adrift and very alone in the world. This challenge of disconnection remained with Merton all of his life. He sought solutions in both wrong and right ways. We often do the same. I really cared only for myself and wanted what I wanted and when I wanted it. Due to my poor grades, I lost my scholarship and returned to the U.S. and lived with my grandparents and my little brother. I enrolled into Columbia University and was trying to get my life back on track. During this time at Columbia, he attended his first Mass at the Church of Corpus Christi in New York City, right near the Columbia University campus. After that experience, his desire for religious things seemed set on a fast track. I started to go to Mass almost daily. And when I was 23, I was baptized and received my first Holy Communion. The following year, I received confirmation. Merton was searching for meaning and direction in his life. He really wanted to know more and more about God. During Holy Week, he went on a retreat at Gethsemane Monastery. Something about being there remained with me after I left. There was something in me that told me to return as a monk, and I did. Then a few days after America joined World War II, I had a visit from my brother John. He was on leave from the Canadian Air Force. There is something about chaos and life's challenges that opens the doorway to search for more meaning my brother sensed this, and he expressed his desire to take his relationship to God more seriously. And within a week, he was also baptized into the Catholic faith. John Paul was sent into action in England, and tragically, his plane lost altitude and crashed. His back was broken, and he died on the Saturday of Passion Week. Merton learned of his brother's death on Easter Sunday. I began to write poetry as a way of dealing with all that I was feeling, the loss of my brother and the death of our mother and father. My superior was very encouraging about my writing and asked me to write about the monastic life, about the saints, and to translate religious texts. After a few years, as a way of encouraging vocations, he suggested I write my auto autobiography. I guessed he thought of me as a man who loved cities and people, but who loved solitude and God more. That I might have something to offer in the way that I wrote. Much to his surprise, when The Seven Story Mountain was published, it became a bestseller. He was able to describe why as a young man with a very active life, he would want to withdraw from society and become a Trappist monk. He was also 
able to explain what it means to be searching for God. His readers were introduced to the contemplative tradition and the writings of the church fathers and great Christian myth mystics in a way that was accessible and understandable to them. One critic said that Merton was able to transform the tale of the prodigal son into a modern day thriller. I felt that I had lived the life of the prodigal son. The last sentence of my book describes the rest of my life. Here ends the book, but not the searching. I continued to search throughout my life. The 27 years in the monastery brought about profound changes in understanding myself. For me, to be a saint means to be my true self, the me that God created. My life was a life of continual conversion. I was always growing through my prayer life and through my writing. On December 10, 1968, after giving a lecture in Bangkok, Thomas Merton died suddenly in a freak accident in his hotel room. It was 27 years to the day after he had entered the monastery at Gethsemane. Although Merton has not been canonized a saint of the Catholic Church as yet, he left us a rich array of writings to help us find our true selves. He also used to listen to jazz, as well as to the records of Bob Dylan and other contemporary folk and rock artists. He made a recording of himself doing what he called a jazz meditation. It is inspiring that he was able to use jazz music as an aid to his prayer life. In jazz, he found what he sought in his relationship with the Holy Spirit, the ability to lose himself in a positive way, and through so doing, to find himself in his relationship to God.